a time for remembering, a time to recall the trials and the triumphs, the fears and the falls. There's a time to be grateful for moments so blessed, the jewels of a There is treasure in our fields, there is treasure in our skies, there is treasure in our dreaming, from the soul to the eye. Oh, wherever we gather, in the light of God's grace, and for all who we remember, there will ever be a place. There is gold that is gleaming in the past we once knew, in our tears and in our laughter, was love brought us true. There's a road we have traveled where sunlight has kissed that carry us onwards when loved ones are missed. There is treasure in our fields, there is treasure in our skies, there is treasures in our dreaming, from the soul to the eye. For wherever we gather, in the light of God's grace, and for all whom we remember, who will ever be. In life, we can truly say that Maddie cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You're all very welcome to our Mass this morning, our funeral Mass this afternoon, should I say, as for our dear friend, uh, Maddie Dowd. I welcome each and every one of you who have gathered here to bid a fond farewell to this great lady. I welcome most especially her family, Kathleen, Seamus, Margaret, Paul, Mary, Bernadette, Rose, Pat, Oliver, Helena, and Susan, and her sister, Marie. I welcome also uh, all of you who have gathered, her nieces and nephews, and we gather here in the light of the Paschal candle, representing the risen Christ, the Paschal candle donated by the Dowd family here to this chapel. And as we gather, we are all saddened at the death of this lady who straddled two parishes, both Valley Hayes in Castle Tara and here in Kilother, and was very faithful to both parishes. At the beginning of her Mass, where you can remain seated, I invite members of her family to bring forward gifts, symbols to the altar, symbols representing the facets and interests of Maddie throughout her life.
Today, we celebrate the life of our wonderful mother, who was the center of our home and our lives. Margaret brings to the altar a family photograph. Family was so important to mum. We celebrated all the different occasions, birthdays, communions, confirmations, weddings. Mum was happy when everyone was together and healthy. Andrea brings mum's rosary beads. Mum had great faith. She always went to Mass. In later years, she would listen to the services on the radio and television. The rosary beads always hung on the wall of the kitchen beside her. She always looked forward to Father Jason and Father Gerald's visits to her. Susan brings flowers from the garden in Ardema. Mum, together with her dad, loved nature. They enjoyed planting in the spring and watching the flowers bloom in the summer and harvest in the autumn. Rose carries a cookbook with lots of recipes and tips. Mum was a great baker and cook. There would be a great smell of freshly baked gingerbread when the grandkids came to visit. Bernadette brings a milk can, which represents the work that Mum done on the farm. Milking the cows, feeding the calves, making the hay. Mary brings a teapot from the family home. There was many cups of tea made on a daily basis. The kettle was always boiling on the cooker. Everyone that called to the house was made welcome. Mum was very precious to us. We loved her with all our hearts, and we will miss her so very, very much. Thank you, Kathleen. And so, as we reflect on our own lives, and that one day we all will have to face God, we ask, we reflect, and ask the Lord for mercy as we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all of the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord of mercy. Christ of mercy. Lord of mercy. And let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life of ours, so as to open to, to us an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy, you may command the name of Maddy Dowd to be inscribed in the great book of life, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now we invite those who are reading to please come forward. Helena and Pat. First reading, a reading from the book of Ecclesiastics. Those who honour their parents will atone for their sins, and those who respect their mother are like those who gather up treasure. Those who honour their parents will have joy in their own children, and when they pray, they will be heard. <coughs> those who show respect to their father will have long life, and those who honour their mother obey the Lord. My child, Help your mother as she ages, and do not grieve her as long as she lives, even if her mind fails. Be patient with her, because you who have all your faculties should not despise her. For kindness to a parent will not be forgotten, and will be credit to you against your sins. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Give me on that day, not only to me, but also to all who belonged for his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. 
Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. She gazed through the glass of the back kitchen window, her hands covered in dough as she kneaded the bread in the beige mixing bowl that Granny Dowd had handed down from of old. She watched as the cattle each in their turn, knowing their seed, breed and generation, left the milking parlour to stand ready at the gate that led into the fresh fields below. And there he followed the long line of his herd, beating his welly with the ash plant he had swung as means to cajole. The sounds of Gay Burnham to keep her company on the radio and the children all off to work and to school. She prepared the soda bread for baking, a cut with lashings of butter a favour when they ran in the door from school. Peeling potatoes, carrots and parsnips, cabbage a simmering over the range, the sounds and smells of her busy kitchen each day meticulously following her routine. The latch lifting on the back door as he left his cap within on the window ledge, followed by Paddy Rudden and Mick Riley of the cross. As she spooned the tea leaves into a brown teapot and cut them slices of her gingerbread. And there they chatted over the births, deaths and marriages from beyond at Kilifana back here to the one tree. Calves to be fed and the parlour to be washed out, the last of her daffodils blowing in the breeze. Tulips and roses and dahlias in the autumn, the people might have wondered where she got time in this place next the hill they call Ardema. But time she found in the midst of the ordinary for every matter under heaven above. There was little time to be silent. Her hands stepped in suds as she washed the cups and plates from the morning tea, reflecting in the eye of her mind of how it all came to be here in this place next Foster's, from the years as a little girl, she grew beyond the road in by Shannon Wood. An only child for many years, born on a June day in 1936, in their home nestled in the corner of Drumavadi. Just she for a while and her father Matt and her mother Mary Dolan, who hailed from Drum. A most enterprising woman who, like her daughters in the years to come, came to build up her farm rearing nearly a hundred turkeys each year to sell at the fair, the money of which was saved until enough was gathered to buy an additional parcel of land. It was here her work ethic was garnered, as her father suffered from arthritis, alongside her mother working the farm, a woman of strength and will in mind and body, until help came along in the form of their little sister, her little sister, Marie. She went to school at Kilother, an intelligent and bright student who had a grow for the Irish language and vocabulary she loved in abundance. All her life, the dictionary was a constant at her side. At times in her kitchen, the conversations with her children were asked Gaelica, listening to Anuot to maintain her grasp of the Irish language. Mass and devotion, work and play, and here, around this place, growing up with a self-discipline and an inner resilience where that was garnered that would stand her in good stead in the years to come. She remained at school until she was 14, winning a scholarship at 16 years to the School of Domestic Science, established in the 1920s by the Sisters of Mercy in Arda. She loathed leaving her parents behind on the farm, especially with her father's infirmities, but her knowledge grew on the rearing of poultry, building up dairy herds and beef cattle, as well as home economics. She returned prematurely to help at home on the farm, but the knowledge garnered 
was invaluable to her in the years that were to come. In the early years of the 1950s, the young Maddie and her neighbours, Peggy McMahon and Mary Fitzpatrick, used to cycle to dances round and about crossing the Deosan borders between Clogher and Kilmore to make the most of the late night dancing allowed in one diocese and during Lent over the other. They danced in halls in Bano, Kilother, Belturbet and Newtown and laughed heartily as they cycled beneath the light of the moon on their way back the road to Drumavadi. Some, new, some nights they pooled their shillings together and booked Peter McEntee to drive them farther afield. On big match days, they caught the train from Red Hills to Clonus, where they watched the boys pass by and this, as they sta- sat atop of the wall with a bird's eye view of the goings on, both on and off the pitch. One Sunday, she spied a re- red haired lad passing betwixt the crowd with his two brothers at his side the three dowds from up at Ardama. She knew them, for she had walked a cow one late summer's day to a big shorthorn bull that dowds had kept, and had chatted Paul on the street whilst the cow was being served. Indeed, a fortune teller told her at a carnival once below in Red Hills that she would one, one day meet and marry a red-haired man, and it seemed that fate had indeed led him to pass on that Ulster final day. They were both pioneers and went on outings together, and at a carnival in Red Hills, Paul sealed their fate when he asked her to traverse the boards with him. They married in the months that followed on the 29th of November, 1961, and it was then she left behind her home in Drumavadi and became the younger Mrs. Dowd of Ardema. With her arrival there, she brought with her great changes to the farm, for as people might have accredited Paul with his progressive methods of farming, it was in fact Maddie who was the visionary behind the operation. Whilst Paul delivered skim milk from the, cream to, from the creamery to the factory in Virginia and worked on the country spreading lime, Maddie was at home putting into practice the knowledge that she had garnered in Arda. She had learned of Friesian Holsteins being introduced from mainland Europe to increase the milk yield on dairy farms. And seeing a drover passing the road with two amongst his herd, she bought them there and then, and slowly but surely over time began to replace the red shorthorn herd with Frisians. She followed the example of her mother building up the farm, working hard every minute of the day to ensure her vision became a reality. Soon the children started to be born, flocking round her like a little brood. Kathleen, Seamus and Margaret, Paul, Mary, Bernadette, Rose, Pat, Oliver, Helena, and Susan. For them, she was the fulcrum around which everything that happened at home, she was the fulcrum around which everything happened at home in Ardema. From little children, her kitchen was the center of their worlds, and all things happened therein. The range was always on the go, lit in the mornings before they went to school, porridge on the table, the kettle on the boil, the whitest nappies you ever seen blowing in the breeze, reused year upon year as each followed the other, her little red-haired children. Each was akin to an only child in the love they received from her. None was her favorite, and each of the eleven knew that they were loved each the same. Baking and cooking, washing and cleaning, cleaning, feeding calves with four galvanized buckets, two in each hand, oftentimes heavily pregnant, as she crossed the yard. Milking and calving come the spring, nothing was a trouble to her. She loved the turning of the seasons, most especially the coming of new life in the spring. There was a time for everything, and everything had its time. And despite the busyness of the day, she gathered her brood around her as they knelt each night in prayer. Their little bowed heads, all to be seen as the rest of their foreheads on a chair. Mother led the rosary and the prayers of the litany, and for no, and no matter what happened, the prayers brought an end to each and every day, for her trust and faith in God was unwavering. Mass and the rosary, the mainstays of her lives, walking to early Mass in Ballyhays, or piled high in the cab of the tractor as they headed over to the road to Mass in Kilother. In the summertime, when the grass grew long and the sound of the mower could be heard in the fields, Father Jimmy would land home from Oregon on the west seaboard of the United States with half the parish in tow, and there the windows would be flung open to air Father Jimmy's room, 
and with these months there was a constant stream of visitors. Paul's aunt and cousins, sister Rose, Talita and Clara, coming for weeks upon end. Cousins descending each evening as the parlour door was swung open and sprees and parties were to be had. For she just loved when the house was full to the rafters, with visitors and the children and their friends as they grew. Bertha parties, 21st. It was a hub of activity as the rooms resounded with voices. Each evening of the week she stood at the end of the table eating her dinner, for there was no time to sit down, as there might be three sittings for dinner, followed always by dessert, as the younger ones came from primary school after three, then the older ones at secondary school, followed by this final sitting of the oldest who came in from work. Kathleen, the eldest, was her mother's aide-de-camp, always at hand to help her with the chores, the cooking and the cleaning, and the caring for the younger children. She was forever at her side. This kitchen in which they stood was the centre of her living, with all her farmer's journals as a reference library piled high. With the passing years, she taught often on all that had been, a house filled with memories and voices as she sat in quiet prayer as each fled the nest, and there was just her and Paul and the younger siblings to recite the rosary. But grandchildren then returned to fill the rooms with all their little stories, as the routine of milking and feeding and calving and mowing never changed, as herself and Paul began to travel to England, Scotland, Europe and beyond. Father Jim Jimmy continued to come home each summer and returned with the, solos, with the swallows, and each passing year brought with it the seasons and the continued work to be done. But no matter where each of her children travelled, this house in Ardema was the centre of all the worlds. It was the place to which each one returned to regain that sense of home, and there in its midst was their mother. She was always and ever there, and in these latter years it became ever more the case, as each one rallied around her from the farthest flung in England and Cork as she faced the unenviable unem decision of an amputation to save her life. But she made the decision with a pragmatism with which she had made every decision throughout her life, and with all the resilience she had built up from as a little girl, which had seen her through the ups and downs of her life and helped her face the future ahead. Her confinement brought with it a slower pace of life and time just to be in the midst of the ordinary and the everyday. Never once over these years was she left alone with one of her children always by her side for kindness to a par parent will not be forgotten and will be accredited to you against your sins. Here in the corner of the kitchen, beside the range, beneath the light of the back window, she read and prayed constantly. She welcomed visitors through the back door, Father Cassidy of a fir First Friday, the bread man, the milkman, Oliver, her constant companion, always in and out. Fiona, Brady, who worked with Oliver, in to tell her the news of the farm that Oliver mightn't tell her. There she sat in the evenings and watched the sales in Cav and Mart online and knew the prices that Oliver and indeed the neighbours got before ever he reached the back door. She filled in her diary daily, read the selves, the farmer's journal, and was up to the minute with all the news and current affairs. She knew what each of her grandchildren was doing and each received a birthday card come their big day. Then the arrival of her van in which she could travel the roads in her wheelchair up to the old graveyard in Kilother to look at all the headstones and down to the village to sit and eat an ice cream, a life lived contentedly in the midst of the ordinary. And so it was on Sunday morning she had come to the end of the road. She had fought the good fight, she had finished the race, the time for her departure was near. She told her children so, I'm not afraid, my time has come, I want to go. Her faith in God and the promise of the resurrection was unwavering. All that awaited her was the crown of righteousness. And so in her mind's eye, she pulled the gate of Grove's End behind her. And she passed the road for the one tree as a rainbow appeared in the sky. She knew that she'd miss them, the brood she'd gathered round them, but she wanted them to rest assured she wouldn't be alone, alone for she was about to meet him, her red-haired true love, in a corner of heaven, they call our demand.
Christmas I remember the year A boy and his sweetheart sat there on the pier Tomorrow he's sailing far over the foam And he prays for the day when the robins come home Though winter passed slowly, sometimes he was sad. He said in his letter the weather was bad, and that he missed her while out on the phone. And he prayed for the day when the robins come home. I will be back when the robins come home. I'll have enough money to make you my own. Don't be too lonely now while I'm gone. Cause I will be back when the robins come home. Yes, I will be back when the robins come home. So I invite those making the prayers of the faithful on our behalf to please come forward. As we gather today for Nana's funeral mass, we give thanks to God for the gift of her presence in each of our lives. We give thanks for all the joy she's brought to our daily lives, the faith she's handed down to us, the memories we've shared that will carry us through the days of our lives to come. Lord, hear us. We remember today for those who granny passing leaves a deep void in their lives. We pray for the grieving sons and daughters, Kathleen, Seamus, Margaret, Paul, Mary, Bernadette, Rosie, Paddy, Oliver, Helena, and Susan, her sons-in-law, her, her daughters-in-law, her beloved grandchildren, her great-granddaughter, and her sister Marie. We pray that God will console their hearts in the days that, and the weeks to come. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious Lord. We pray for those who carry the burden of illness each and every day, especially those who must bear the infirmities that age, bring, that age brings their way. We pray that they know the healing hand of God and good friends to see them through. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious Lord. We pray for all those who cared for Granny over the past years and allowed her to remain at home until her passing, her carers and devoted family members. May they all know the rewards of the kindness to her. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously. We pray for the deceased of Maddie's family, her husband Paul, her parents Matt and Mary, and all of the deceased of the flood and families. May they all join in a joyous reunion in heaven today. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously. We pray today for our granny, that after a road gently trodden, she may reach at last her heavenly abode. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O Lord, support us all the day long until the shades lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us all a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. We ask these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I invite Seamus and Oliver to bring forward the gifts of bread and wine. Take our hearts. 
we love you, take our lives. O oh, Father, we are yours. We are yours. Yours as we stand at the table, you sit. Yours as we eat the bread our hearts can forget. We are the signs of your life with us yet. We are yours. We are yours. Take our bread. We ask you take our hearts. We love you take our lives. Oh, Father, we are yours, we are yours. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant, Maddie, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that, should any stain of sin have clung to her or any human fault, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away. And we ask this our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, and though saddened, saddened by the certainty of dying, might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, Lord, for your faithful life is changed and not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with the angels and archangels, the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts of heaven, we sing the unending hymn of your praise. Holy holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, to graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain the inheritance with your elect. So that we may, ob sorry, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Bridget and all the saints, uh, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, uh, Pope Francis, uh, our Bishop Martin, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Maddie, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform their lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so, as we gather as children of God, let us pray to our Father in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. We pray for peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with each of you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God. This here is Jesus Christ who takes away the sins of the world. 
happy are those who are now called to a supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to all of us who receive it. the sunrise lighting the sky casting its shadows near and on this morning bright though it be I feel no shadows near me but you are always close to me, following all my ways. May I be always close to you, following all your ways, Lord. I watch the sunlight shine through the clouds, warm in the earth below. And as the midday life seems to say, I feel your brightness near me. But you are always close to me, following all my ways. May I be always close to you. Sunset fading away, lighting the clouds with sleep. And as the evening closes its eyes, I feel your presence near me. But you are always. Close to me, following all my ways. May I be always close to you, following all your ways, Lord. People of all ages, 
gathered round the gable wall Poor and humble men and women Little children that you call We are gathered here before you And our hearts are just the same Filled with joy at such a vision as we praise your name, golden rose, queen of Ireland, all my cares and troubles cease as we kneel with love. For you, Lady of Knock, our Queen of Peace. Oh, your message was unspoken, but the truth in silent lies. So I gaze upon your vision and the truth I try to here I stand with John the teacher and with Joseph at your side and I see the Lamb of God on the altar glorified and the Lamb will conquer and the woman Loaded in the sun, will shine your light on everyone. Golden rose, queen of Ireland, all my cares and troubles see. As we kneel with love before you, Lady of Knock, our Queen of Peace, Lady of Knock, our Queen of I invite Paul now to read for us a reflection. I'd like to say a few words of thanks for all those who have stood by mum with us over the years, especially in the last few days, we cannot adequately express how much your support has meant to us. To the carers who looked after mum at home and in the hospital, your dedication, compassion and professionalism have been a source of comfort and strength for my mum and the family alike. To our dear neighbours and friends who offered their support, whether true or listening ear, a gesture, your love and presence means the world to us. I thank you also to those who travelled long distance to be with us. We are overwhelmed by the number of people who came to pay their respects. One would just be in awe. We would also like to thank all those who couldn't be here today but have offered their thoughts and prayers and wishes from afar. We would also like to extend our word of thanks to the priests particularly to Father Jason Murphy and Father Jerry Cassidy. and mom enjoyed the company every on first Fridays. Your words of wisdom, prayers and spiritual guidance have been a source of solace and hope through the years. In times of sorrow, it is the support and kindness of others that lightens the burden of grief and helps us to find moments of peace amidst the pain. Your generosity and love 
have touched our hearts deeply and we are eternally grateful for you. Thank you. I, a little poem which I would like to read as the last gesture to mom. It's weep not for me. Weep not for me though I am gone into that gentle night. Grieve if you will, but not for long upon my soul, sweet flight. I am at peace, my soul at rest. There is no need for tears, for with your love I was so blessed for all those many, many years. There is no pain, I suffer not. The fear is all gone. But now these things are your thoughts in your memory I live on. Remember not my fight for breath. Remember not the strife. Please do not dwell upon my death, but celebrate my life. Before I ask Father Gerard to lead us in the prayers of final commendation, again, just to reiterate Paul's words of thanks to each and every one of you for your participation in the Mass and your assistance to the family over these past days. A sincere thanks to each and every one of you. And thank you to the family on behalf of myself and Father Gerard for welcoming us into your home over the years and being so hospitable uh, to us both uh, and your kindness uh, is not forgotten and you're welcome to us and your easy presence in this in a faith filled home was ever present after the final prayers of commendation there will be an opportunity to sympathize and uh, so as the family uh, are in both seats you uh, the undertaker will direct you to come up this right hand side and to cross over and then down uh, the left hand side. Sorry about this. I, I just don't know where to find this. It's a rather complicated book, this, actually. I find it all the time. I just don't know. Things are all over the place. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. We just say a little silent prayer now for Maddie's repose.
Father Wilson will now sprinkle holy water on Maddie's coffin in remembrance of the day that she was baptized, on which occasion she received the hope of life eternal. And out of recognition of the fact that because of our baptism and confirmation, our bodies are the temple of God's Holy Spirit during our time here on earth, Father Jason will uh, incense Maddie's coffin. Which contain her earthly remains. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we now commend our sister Maddie in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. Through Christ our Lord. Hail, Queen of Heaven, the ocean star, guide of the wonder here below. Born on life's search, we claim thy care. Save us from. Peril, 
Peace now, let's take Maddy to a place of rest. An Irish boy was leaving, leaving his own native home, crossing the broad Atlantic, once more he wished to roam. And as he was leaving his mother, while standing on the quay, he threw his arms around her waist, and this to her did say, A mother's love's a blessing, no matter where you roam. Keep her while she's living. For you miss her when she's gone. Love her as in childhood, when feeble, old, and gray. You'll never miss your mother's love till she's buried beneath the plain. And as the I'll settle down in life, and I'll take a nice young Irish girl and take her to be my wife. And as the kids grow older, they'll play around my knee, and I'll teach them the very same my mother once talked to me, a mother's love's a blessing, no matter where you roam, keep her while 
she's living, you'll miss her when she's gone. Love her as in childhood, when feeble, old, and gray, or you'll never miss your mother's love till she's buried beneath the clay. You'll never miss your mother's love till she's buried beneath the clay.